Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Fish Locker out on the bank. We're uh, up at Sanctuary Lakes, up in Devon. It's a cracking little venue, and uh, I'm going to be trying to catch some tench. Now, I will be using what's called the lift method. I will go into detail about showing you that in a minute. But in a minute, I'm just pre baiting an area just in front of me. It's a decent sized lake, it's about an acre deep in one end. It's 20 odd foot deep in one end and it's about four foot, four foot deep behind me. Just pre-baiting an area with some um, some ground bait, some sweet corn, some free maggots. And then the uh, good thing about tench is you can generally, generally tell when they're in an area because they'll dirty the water up and you'll see them start bubbling and fizzing where they're rooting around on the bottom. And then hopefully I'll get to show you a tench. The method that I'm using for the tench is uh, it's called the lift method and what it is is I've just got my float and I plumbed out the depth which was meaning that uh, I tied a weight to the bottom put my float in and dropped it and waited and, and the float sank so I made it a little bit longer and a little bit longer until I found out exactly how deep it was now this is how deep it is from the hook to my float what I'm going to do now is I've attached a swan shot probably three to four inches from the end so this weight is actually making this float sink in the water so the float sinks all the way down till it gets to there what happens is this sits on the bottom like that and whenever a fish picks this up and lifts the weight off the bottom it lifts weight off the float so the float rises in the water it lifts, it's the lift method. What will often happen is it will lift up, and lay over like that and then shoot away. That's a textbook bite. That's what we're waiting for. Now the area that I've been, been baiting up is showing a bit of interest. I want to get this cast out. I don't know if you can see the floats just over there, but I've just had a good bite on the left hand side one. It's just lifted and just bobbed a little bit. All I've been doing so I've got a little bit of ground bait made up. And every now and then I just keep throwing just a little piece like that. And free feeding just a few maggots at a time. Just little and often. So what I'm waiting for is the float to lift up and lay down. And that shows that something has picked the bait up off the bottom and has lifted that extra swan shot, allowing the float to rise in the water. I can see that there are fish in the area now because the water, as you can see, is rippling and it, there was the occasional swirl of muddy water which shows that something's rooting a route around down where I put the ground bait. Fingers crossed for some fish. So it's just lifted right up. Missed it. Cheeky little blight has had my maggots away. Use a piece of sweet corn. But that was a textbook bite. All it did was the float was sitting in the water to there and all of a sudden it went like that. And that's something that, uh, that it pays to do as well is that when you cast out, put the rod tip down under the water and wind in the slack line until your float bobs. That way you know that the line in between the rod tip and the float is tight and is under the water. Because if it was sitting on top of the water, any wind blowing would drag your float away. Yeah, you see the floats just just lifted and just popped again. Now, unfortunately, it's picked up another new line. 
barbless hook right in the top lip. I know you'll agree. Cracking fish. Look at this guy putting a putting a keep net and we'll have a look at him in a minute. Left on floats, juice dipping away. Now I've been experimenting a little bit. And I've tried using them. Maggots and worm. And this was actually on a single piece of sweet corn. I know this net's a little bit oversized, but there are some big fish in here. I didn't want to catch a big fish and only have the small net ready. Calm down. They're absolutely stunning, aren't they? Absolute powerhouses, the size of that tail. Like a paintbrush. Absolute crackers. The stamp of the fish has generally been the same. It's just inside the mouth. There you go, look. That was it. Little size 10 barbless. What a beauty. Game it, keep net. Ah, that was that was all that this was. Just a single piece of sweet corn. Just uh, yeah, fingers are slipping. Just hooked on like that. It is crucial about getting this this depth right here. Because the floats just sitting about there, and all it was was it was a bob and then slowly sank away like that. I think I've got a fish on the other rod as well. Yeah, I missed it. Is that half my worm though? That one didn't lift. Just sailed away. Okay. Okay. The net's a little bit overkill for the size of the fish, but I didn't want a big fish to turn up and we had the small net. No. Another, another cracking fish, but as you can see, look the hook just in the just in the corner of its mouth. There we are, beauty of barbless, straight out. They are incredibly powerful. If you're a ten pounder, you'd sharp know about it. Float on the left, just in a textbook bob, and then lift right out the water. Now, I was expecting it to, to lift and then lay over it or just disappear and pop back up again. Fishing away nicely, just to keep hand feeding. A dozen maggots and a couple of pieces of corn, and a little bit of ground bait every. Five ten minutes, and I don't know if you can see, but yeah, we're just like where that fish has just moved. A lot, a lot of fizzies, a lot of bubbling, a lot of swirling, showing that there's a lot of fish down there moving around. We've been doing really well, yeah, doing a lot better than I expected, actually. I think I've had about eight or nine pinch. Two keen, pulled it straight out of his mouth. But yeah, just exactly like I was saying. Getting them feeding well in an area. I don't know if you 
saw then cast out to the area I wanted to be and put the rod tip under the water wind the slack line until the float bobs that way you know you're tight up to your float so when you float lift so your float bobs you know you can lift straight away and you're not going to lift the slack line you're going to connect with the fish I might um, all of the fish I've been getting have been around about the same size they are a shoaling fish up to a certain degree so generally they all hang around together now I'm hoping that there will be a big one amongst them so what I might do is I might switch over from this method and I might just put a little running ledger with like a load of lobworms hoping that um, hoping that I might find a bigger one or even find something else might find a carp or something right I'd uh, I've been fishing away with the lift method on the float I've been catching quite well so I thought I would, I would shift it up a bit try and change your own technique so I tried um, I've had a lot of success coarse fishing recently with a meter uh, a method feeder and a hair rigged worm and I rigged one up and pretty much within about 15 minutes another cracking tension and all that was was it was just a sliding method feeder sat right in right in corner of his mouth there and get a discord running so perfect and um, another tension on another method brilliant yeah look this is how I'm rigging the method feeder I've just got a couple of worms on the hair rig get a little bit of my ground bait and just mashing it around my feeder like that making like a little depression in the top and just lay my worm on top like that and then mashing another bit of ground bait and just making like like a little sandwich and wrapping it all up in a ball and this is this is quite a big bit of ground bait all in all now look but as I'm casting this to areas that I haven't pre-baited I want there to be a little bit of extra feeder on there to try and draw the fish in and it worked so far so you know any luck we might find a carp with it these fish really are fantastic fun to catch they're just stunning aren't they I don't even know how many this is that I've had now. Yeah, beautiful fish. And scrap, the size of that tail, they really do put it to good use. They scrap like crazy. Let's get him in the net. Bites have all but all but dried up now. On the on the on the lift method. And I've got I've only got that much ground bait left. Now I have been, I've been hand feeding a little bit every now and then. But to be honest, I think a pike has moved into the swim. Because every now and again you see like all the little fish dart away. And I was getting pretty good bites consistently. I'd, I'd landed loads of fish. And everything's just gone dead now. Now, to start off with, I had uh, two rods out there. I've now chucked, um, took the method feeder out into the centre of the lake. Just to try and catch something different, I might um, I might bring that in now. And just use this ground bait just for that. And um, I've stuck stuck a little live bait out down there to try and see if I can find a pike. Well, the pike. We'll uh, we'll give it about another half an hour, and then we'll make tracks. Now we have had a cracking afternoon um, fishing for tench using the lift method. We've got a farmer who's bringing his cows in and uh, making a hell of a racket now. He's, um, yeah, very simple method. All it was was it was just, if you can see there, I plumbed out the depth of the area where I was fishing. Uh, I ground baited up a little bit with some free offerings of uh, like ground bait and bread, uh, some hand fed, um, sorry, some free maggots and some uh, sweet corn. 
and all I'd done was I plumbed out so that I knew what the depth was by putting a float on and then putting a weight on the end and then throwing it in and then if it's sunk give it a little bit more line and more line and more line until it just kind of popped up like that and then what happens here is the theory being that this lead shot here will sit directly on the bottom so that the float just sits to there your bait is on the bottom below that swan shot so when a fish picks that up and lifts this lead off the bottom your float lifts like that now it lifts and usually lays over and then will slide away fantastic method did really well on it it's it's the first time i've i've really used it specifically and it's it's been fantastic i mean i'm, I'm going to go and have a look in the in the uh, keep net now but i think there's it makes 10 or 11 10 or 11 tr uh, tension there now i did catch two of them on a um, method feeder I'm just mixing it up a bit once i'd found that one method was working i just wanted to see what else worked so we'll um we'll go and have a look in the landing net and then we'll see how we do Oh my word, well, I'll have a lot of tension there. Okay. <laughs> Try and swing that round so you can see. What a, did incredibly well. I don't know how many we've got, what we've we got here. Two, four, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And some some incredible fish in there. They're absolute stunners, aren't they? This one's been in the wars a little bit. I think, I'd, I think a pike's had hold of him. Yeah, the, uh, the males, males scrap like crazy, and I've got some fantastic colours on them. I can't go over that tail, it's just a monster tail, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's, get, let's get a photo of these and put them back. 